Hello guys, boy Gene here with G-Squared Tactical. We really appreciate you guys joining us today. What we have for you today is the H&K USP 45 Auto in the tactical version. It's kind of modeled after the uh, Mark 23, but not quite as expensive as those. The MSRP on this is about $1,300. I was very, very fortunate to not have to pay that for this for this firearm and I'll get into that in a minute. Up front, just wanna apologize for the fact that we don't have any range video. Understanding that we literally started this YouTube channel the very month that Corona was, uh, was introduced to the world. And so there's been a pandemic essentially since we started the channel and thus the ammunition issue and so forth. And a lot of times I like to hear friends of mine, maybe people I've watched for years on YouTube that I trust. I trust their opinion. I have no reason not to. I, I would prefer to hear what they think about a firearm, what their personal experiences have been rather than regurgitating stuff that they've heard you know, from, from other people, essentially, from other influencers and so forth. So that's what we kind of try to do. Unfortunately, our experiences with a lot of the pistols that we have, you know, came pre us having the YouTube channel. So we don't have a lot of range, if any, in most cases to attach to, to the video. And we do apologize for that, but we are with your support hitting that subscribe and that like button with your support we're hoping to to be able to fix that a lot sooner than later and get you guys some off awesome range content so we'll start here at the bottom of this gun and we'll talk at the very bottom of the mag well here. There's nothing special going on pretty standards not even really beveled or anything no flaring it does have these cutaways at the bottom of the mag well <clears throat> for you to rip your mag out the front and the back of the grip have a nice checkering and then the side is just a, a mediocre type of um, i guess a texture now unfortunately you won't be able to see that maybe we'll attach a maybe we'll attach a picture of what it looked like prior to me putting these toweling grips on here because i am a fan of the rubberized toweling grips as long as the color matches well with the frame and i'm able to cut it away i don't like it wrapping all the way around i like cutting it off and attaching it attaching <laughs> attaching it on there uh, in pieces so that it's more aesthetically pleasing and i really do like the rubberized toweling grips so i have put those on here because i wasn't a huge fan of the of the uh, texturing on the grip, but nonetheless, that's what you're working with. So moving on up, you do have this ambi paddle type uh, mag release here. You'll know the difference between it and some other H and K models uh, like the VP nine and so forth, that it's a lot larger, a lot larger area to grab onto. This is more of a little nub than it is a paddle. But, and I know that some people have issue with that. Uh, some people have complained about that. Me personally, I'm a fan of it. Of course, if you are going to drop the mag with your uh, shooting thumb, yeah, no, that's not gonna happen without adjusting your grip, but that's really not relevant to me because as I've showed you guys in other videos, it's easy enough for me to reach down with my index finger on or my trigger finger and knock that magazine loose and i've even practiced that with my v, vp9 and such at the range and so forth dropping the mag with my index finger don't even have to change my grip ready to go back to shooting and so i don't mind it but i could definitely see where if you are accustomed to you know dropping it with your shooting hand thumb you know having to adjust your just your grip, I could see where that could be an issue. Definitely just something you would have to practice and, and you know become accustomed to using. So moving on up, you'll notice here, so 
there's a cutaway here in front of the trigger that you have to specifically buy H and K items um, or rails, I guess you could say, to put on here to attach lights and so forth. I forget the system that H and K calls it, but I really wasn't a fan of it. I didn't think it was suited for what I wanted to do, the types of lights and things that I wanted to put on here. So I got this attachment from uh, GG and G tactical it's a two-piece it rides right in the um the frame very well in that little slot and you basically put it on from the left and the right and then it's got a uh allen screw here on the uh i guess that would be the left side or the right side it'll tighten from either side and it it seems to be a very very good attachment it's, it's held up very very well for me i've put a lot of lights on here and i've shot it a lot with that on there and it's not giving me any problem whatsoever so on the front of the trigger guard here you do have some serrations uh, if you're into that if you put your finger out in front of the trigger it, you have that available to you super super large trigger guard like almost gawky it's so large but you know if you got big hands if you got on gloves you know what it it, it suits that purpose very very well uh, the trigger, the trigger is what it is in a double action. It's about 11 and a half pounds and man, it is stiff. It is a stiff, stiff trigger on that double action. Now in the single action, you know, the reset is nothing to write home about. It's very audible. Um, you don't really, you don't really necessarily feel it on your finger a lot. It's not a great reset. Um, and it does have quite a bit of take up after it resets. And, but you know, this gun shoots so well and so accurately that as much as you sit here and whine about little things concerning the trigger, you find yourself actually liking the trigger once you get out there and you actually start firing this gun. It does have an adjustment screw in the center of the trigger to um to move in or move out for over travel or stop uh, when it hits the wall and breaks uh, to keep it from going any further back or if you like it to go further back whatever suits your fancy is kind of a a trigger stop screw or over travel uh, wh however you guys uh, refer to that again it's about 11 pound on the double action and on the single action after a decent amount of little take up there's no grit or anything but there is a decent amount of take up more than i like uh after the the hammer is back and that pull there is is right around three pounds so two and a half three pounds i was getting different different uh readings on my pull gauge it's kind of hard on this one to get a really really good uh accurate reading uh, because of the distance really between here and here the back of the grip and the front of the trigger but it's about two and a half or three pounds again the the thing about this gun and we'll talk about that here in a second but the thing about this gun that uh that really brings it home is just it's just overwhelming reliability and the torture test and things that this gun has been through so we'll, we'll come on up to the slide here it does have a red highlight or marking on top of the ejector here to where when it has a round in the chamber you can very easily see that red and, and it kind of serves or does serve should i say as a loaded chamber indicator of course you know i wouldn't stake my life on that but it does show up pretty well as a red loaded chamber indicator so the slide itself man it's, it's it's a large it's a large gun in general just 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 in general a very very large large gun and the overall length just now that we're talking about that is 8.64 inches the overall height is 5.9 the overall width is 1.26 so it's a very large gun and I have very small sausage fat hands. And as I've told you guys before, that, that kind of limits some of the guns that people like to me not liking them, you know. But this actually feels really, really nice in the hand. I'm able to, to grip this very, very well. It's very well balanced. 
in so much that when you have a full magazine in here and you start to empty it out, putting putting rounds down range, you can you can actually feel the difference. You can feel it while you're shooting. It's just it's a very very well balanced and uh, just like I said, just holds really really well in the hand. Just slightly over a five inch barrel, and the frame is fiber uh, reinforced. And it's been through NATO trials where they have frozen this thing to like sub minus 40 some odd degrees and unthawed it and it heated it up and froze it again and unthawed it. And it's shot flawlessly with very minimal to no wear or any issues whatsoever. It does have two 12 round magazines uh, that, that came with the gun. And so you got your 12 plus one or what have you. It does have much like if you're looking at the back, someone said one time it kind of looked like a high point. Uh, it has this very high bore axis, you know, much like looking at the back of a SIG or something like that, maybe a 320. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it looks almost identical in the rear here to a SIG. Now, it's not undercut, doesn't have a, a huge extended beaver tail here, but uh, again, like I said, it holds well. And, you know, my the web of my hand is nowhere near that slide, so they, there's zero chance for slide bite, I would say, with that high bore axis. And Getting on to the, the, the hammer here or the safety mechanism, it does have a decocker so you can safely drop the hammer on a live round. As you guys know, if you've watched the channel, I'm a very big fan of that. Being able to load one in the chamber, safely drop the hammer without having to do it manually. And you can either ride it with the safety up or the safety down whichever way you prefer to, to so it's kind of like the uh f and h tactical where you know the the uh safety it serves as a safety and a decocker so you know i'm a real big fan of that very large slide lock here unfortunately i'm not able to manipulate it without changing my grip i can lock it back but i really can't send it back home without changing my grip so you know whatever that kind of sucks but again it is a very very large large gun so on to the the uh the sights here and you'll notice on the front sight when i put up a picture that i have drilled i took a small drill bit and took me some time i might add to drill me a very strategic hole in the front of that and put white paint in there because I just needed that white dot. I was just not a fan of a blacked out front sight, but that's how it comes. It is raised, it is adjustable from side to side or for windage. Uh, the rear sight here is a steel sight as well. It is adjustable for windage and elevation and it's stamped with H and K. So it's um, it's H and K sight. This, this model does have a threaded barrel. It unscrews the wrong way. It unscrews, so instead of left loose right tight it's uh left tight and right loose so uh yeah so you know that'll be a good thing to remember because i've actually saw some people that did not know that that thought it was just tight and trying to get in, get it off and over tightened it tremendously so you'll see that it also has a washer here on the barrel and i yeah, a rubber rubber washer seal, whatever you want. To, I'm not really sure. I, I they they say that that's for the suppressor, something for the suppressor. I'm not exactly sure if that keeps trash maybe from getting back into the the barrel, the frame area inside the frame. I'm not really sure, but it does have a washer. I've seen some of them are black. The one on mine is green. Uh, you can put your suppressor and such on here and the sights are elevated enough for out of the box to be able to um, co-witness, not co-witness, but see over top of that suppressor. So it's quote unquote suppressor height sights. Now to get right down to shooting this gun, I'm gonna say right now that I have never in my life shot a 45 caliber gun that I was more accurate with. This thing is a blast to shoot, it is so much fun. It's almost like cheating. 
it makes you feel like the pro that you may not be. And so I'll just say that out the gate. It is ugly. It is gawky. I never bought it for that reason. There was no way I was about to gonna spend, you know, thirteen, fourteen hundred dollars for a gun that was just this ugly. But man, I tell you what, when you get it to the range and you shoot it and you really start doving down into the internals of this gun and the and the the just the pure utter torture that this gun went through um to to get nato certified i guess you could say and then just to go out there and shoot it you know it's really surprising it really just it's a shock and all kind of deal you know and the finish on the slide here is a one well the, the slide itself is a one piece machine nitro uh, i think it's carbonized i think is how they pronounce it steel slide they say that this thing, now I'm not the kind of person that's going to find out, but they say that this thing is the best finish you can find anywhere, any place, anytime. Like you, there's, if you butt this finish up, you really, really done did something. Uh, the sight radius on this is 6.73 inches. And, you know, again, I just can't say enough about how how much I love shooting this gun, literally the most accurate 45 I've ever had. I, and when I first originally, to get to the story of what I paid for this, when I first originally, you know, was looking at this gun because I had heard a bunch of hype around it, it was like, there's no way I'm paying that much money for a gun that's that ugly. And so I ended up getting the H&K uh, 45. Uh, no, I'm sorry, you idiot. The uh fnx tactical 45 why well because it had all these added little cute features and things the rail was already there um you know it had a, a, a mag drop that was on the the grip versus under the trigger um you know some bells and whistles so to speak and it held 15 rounds of uh ammunition in the mag it had that rounded off <clears throat> uh, mag and I, I don't know, you know, I got called in or sucked into the the uh, fame of it and, you know, people wanting that gun and stuff. And so I bought it and someone was wheeled this gun from their grandfather or somebody. Uh, the gun was never shot, never used. They took it to a local gun shop for a consignment and put it on consignment. And he was asking a thousand dollars. And it stayed in the shelf for almost two years. And every time I'd go in there, I'd offer 25 less. And they ended up getting it for $850, which I thought was an absolute steal. And it was an absolute steal. And I have made some adjustments to it so I could get me a flashlight on here so it would be a formidable truck or nightstand gun. And you just have to shoot this gun. If you never had this gun, if you turned your nose up at it because of how it looks or maybe even how it slides sounds when it's coming back, you know, that kind of turned me off too. You've got to take this gun to the range and you've got to shoot this gun to really appreciate how awesome this thing is. So we hope that you guys enjoyed the video. I'm sure there's a lot more to this gun that I left out. Just kind of wanted to tell you about our personal experience, what we did to make it our own and we hope to get some range video video up for you guys really, really soon. So uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit the thumbs up. We can't continue to do this without your guys' support. Thanks very much for watching today. Gene with G-Squared Tactical here. We thank you for joining, 